here at the Brick Road Wrestling Camp with 2015 NCAA champion Nathan Tomasello. Nathan, thanks for taking the time to speak to us. Yeah, um, it's my pleasure. So I was in the fifth grade and uh, a friend down the street, no one in my family wrestled, so my friend down the street I was pretty close with, his name was Joe Cassie. Um, we used to hang out and do stuff together, and he said he got into wrestling in the third grade, and he kept bugging me to try it, but during that time, I was in soccer and in baseball and stuff like that, and I just didn't have any time, so the one day came up, and my soccer practice got canceled that night, and he deci I decided to try it out. He convinced me to try it. I went, and went to this youth practice, and thought it was going to be WWE stuff, baby wrestling, and I was surprised when I got in there, guys were doing drop steps and stuff like that, and once I did the first practice, I started like the sport, and came back, went back into it, and did pretty well after that, so that was kind of the basic storyline for getting into it. Great. Was the school I think I became more committed into it um, my youth coach had a big part into that uh, he saw a lot of potential in myself his name is Bob Johnson I wrestled for him fifth and sixth grade year and once I got into middle school he wanted me to start traveling uh, across the country and wrestling some big tournaments so I was like he said if you want to become the best this is what you need to do so in seventh grade I started traveling to tournaments like Tulsa Reno and like Liberty and Big Four Nationals, and I started liking more and more. When I got into high school, the only two sports I started was playing at that point was soccer and wrestling. And after my freshman year in high school, I decided to make a commitment going into my sophomore year just to wrestle. At that point, I was all in, and I wanted to, I had the dream of becoming national champ, four time state champ, and also uh, an Olympic champ. So. Hopefully you get all those accomplished. Right now it's going well. So freshman year I had came in second at the state tournament in junior high. I had lost in double overtime to a kid named Jared Cortez, who now goes to Illinois. And after that, um, I went to Fargo Nationals and took third as a cadet. So those two tournaments were pretty important into how I viewed going into my freshman year, if I could win the state tournament. I felt like I was there, I was wrestling, I was improving every single day, and I just thought that I saw some of the greats come in and win it as freshmen, and I wanted to be one of those guys that has had the potential to become a four-timer. So um, once I got into high school, that's what, that and soccer were just the only two sports I played. And uh, I felt like during the season, uh, my fall year, I didn't get to practice as much as I wanted to because of soccer, so that's kind of ultimately why I chose to do just wrestling after I won it my freshman year because I wanted to commit all my time into becoming a four-timer after that. Yeah, it was, uh, it's a lifestyle at that point. You, you have to live like a national champ. That means going to bed early. That means not staying up late during the weekends and partying. That means eating the right food. That means spending a lot of time practicing, doing your schoolwork, keeping your grades up. So it's like, it's, it's a commitment. So I would say I lost a lot of friends, but I gained a lot of uh, strength in the friends I had. My friendships became a lot stronger because the people I became friends with and trusted me really became bonded because they knew how much I wanted this goal. And I would say I don't have a bunch of friends, but the friends I do have, I can call anytime and we'll hang out anytime. And I feel like we have a strong bond, like we're brothers. Yeah. Uh, most of my friends are wrestlers. I have a couple friends back at home that do not wrestle that I still hang out with. So, but I would say the majority of the guys I, I'm friends with are wrestlers, just because people like they're like me. They know what it takes, and it's just, you're with them a lot. But definitely have made friends outside of the sport, and that's been a blessing as well, because then I can just hang out and don't have to talk about wrestling all the time. I think when I was younger, I was a kid that once I got into wrestling, I wasn't that social. I think um, as the years have progressed, my personality has opened up, and I can talk now and 
relax. I think when I was younger, especially in middle school and part of my high school years, all I was was focused on wrestling. I was really serious, but I think getting the right coaches and meeting the right guys the last couple years have really helped me open up and then become more of a guy that I can hang out with, relax, and like chop it up afterwards, but during the room, I'm still that same focused kid. So I definitely, I think I've improved on that, being able to switch it on and off, but it's, it's definitely been uh, an experience and life lessons that have helped me become that way. Yeah, it, tip, it teaches you discipline. I think people that just want to be regular students, sometimes they don't realize that wrestling and sports that require a lot of discipline carry over to your academics. If you want to become a national champion in wrestling, you have to apply that same focus into your schoolwork. So that's what I do. I don't think I'm the most gifted uh, student, but I try really hard. I turn in every homework assignment. I talk to the teachers and try to get as much help as I can. And I just, I'm committed to doing any, any of the work. So I think it just makes me, wrestling has helped me become disciplined and just do whatever it takes to, to get the great grades and to do well in school. Yeah, it's the same approach. Like, you don't just wake up one day and say, oh, I want to win the national championship. It takes years, it takes months, it takes preparation. That's the same thing with, with tests. You can't just wait till the last second, like, oh, I'm going to try to ace this test and study, cram it all in the, the day before. It takes, I write down when the tests are, and each week I try to spend some time of what I learned and get prepare myself for the, the final exam. So it's, it's just putting in time and learning as much as you can throughout the semester. So when the finals do come up, you're already prepared. You don't have to cram too much in by the end. Yeah. Favorite subject? It used to be math, but not too much anymore. I would say I'm, I like I like physics. Physics is fun. Um, the one 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 class I took was called physics sports. It was a tough class, but I just loved what we did with that. And then also uh, just kind of learning the history of how sports became and how they have developed and kind of sports marketing stuff like that. That's my major sports industry, so I enjoy. Uh, learning about sports in general. My mom was very, very big into driving me all over the place. Same thing as my youth coach. So she was kind of, she always used to say she was the designated taxi driver. She just make me laugh about that. But yeah, she was, she, she was really committed to helping me become a state champ, national champ. So when I was in youth, she, she definitely drove me around. And I remember sometimes I'd get done with the workout, she'd, she'd already make dinner, she'd pack in the car, I'd eat dinner, and then I'd go to another workout. So it's like, and then also in high school, since my, my uh, school was 40 minutes away, I worked out at a close gym by our place that my mom had a lifetime membership to. It was called Bally Total Fitness, and now it's called FX Fitness. And she bought me a membership, so then when we worked out there, she'd be my lifting partner. So my mom had a big impact, and my dad had a very imp big impact in my uh, financial side. He worked at uh, steel mill, uh, or the steel mills in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and he was basically the, the kind of the backbone of supporting me financially. If he didn't work, I wouldn't have been able to travel all over the place. So, <laughs> and then my brother and sister, they're all they're always been supportive, um, and. They, they have uh, sports of their own, so they know how much dis discipline it takes. So when it's close to, to tournaments, a lot of times they're not going to bug me because then they know how focused I am on trying to accomplish what uh, my goals are. Great. I grew up in uh, a Catholic background, but then when I made the decision to go to Cargill Valley Christian Academy, that really helped kind of improve my spiritual strength and my journey with Christ. 
I think faith, my religion, wasn't that important up until I got into high school. Then I think seeing those, seeing the people at CBSA and talking to the pastors there kind of helped me become stronger in my faith and really accept Christ after my uh, ninth grade year. Mm -hmm. After that, um, I met a personal boxing trainer, her name's Carol Griffith, at the end of my sophomore year, going into my junior year, and she's one of the strongest Christians in her faith, most humble woman, and we actually boxed and trained boxing. After I'd be after practice, I would go home. She'd come to my house. We'd have boxing. We'd have uh, boxing heavy bags, speed bags in the gym, and she'd train me that during the nights. Come over to my house. She was very committed. She helped me improve in my strength, uh, and uh, she also helped me just with growing. I had a lot of questions about Christ, a lot of questions about religion in general. She helped me with that, and we still are very close today. And then also having a head coach named Tom Ryan, who's strong in his faith, has also helped me a lot. And it, it helped me to have guys on the team that have the same viewpoint as myself. Um, a lot of guys are Christians on the team, and they love to go to Bible studies and go to the same church called the Rock City Church out in Columbus. So it, it's just having great people around me and just growing my faith every single day and asking questions. So Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, most important lesson, I would say, is just being humble in what you do and putting in everything you have. That's the, that's the biggest thing. Like, You can win and become a national champ, but you still are just an average guy who sins and you need God's grace uh, to redeem yourself. And when you, the sport of wrestling is the most humbling sport there is. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat, it's you versus that other guy. So you can be on top of the world the one day and win a national championship, but then you can go the next day and lose and lose to guys and just say what's up, but, you know, like this, that's, that's like the biggest thing. Like you could be the best the one day, but also then you cannot even place a Nationals the following year. So mm -hmm. it's like every single day, putting in everything you have to improve and make the most out of every single day. And that's, that's what I view. Like I don't want to have any regrets when I get to a National Tournament. I want to put everything into a hat, everything I have every single day, so that when I go there, if I don't accomplish what I want to accomplish, I'm, I don't have any regrets. I'm like, I put everything into this sport. So I think those are the two lessons I would say. Being humble, knowing that you can win, but the next day you can lose, and then also putting in everything you have every single day. It makes you have no regrets. So mm -hmm. I think some guys, sometimes guys are hesitant and they want to hold back because then they're like, oh, I didn't put everything I had into it. But then that gives you even more regrets when you're done. You're like, what if I would have done this or that? So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, junk food or regular food? Off-season food. Off-season food. I love ice cream. That's one of my favorite things. I always have like a scoop or so every week or so. So I like any kind of ice cream basically except for mint. That's not. I don't like mint. Ooh. But and then regular food. I would say I like I like chicken steak fajitas. My mom makes really good thing. When I go back home, I always ask her to make that. And uh, um, other than that. Skyline and chili? No, nah, Skyline and chili is pretty good, but uh, yeah, that and just, uh, I'm blanking now. There's another one. Like, uh, the f favorite funny movie is Without a Paddle. It's uh, my friend, like I said, Joe Cassie. We watched that movie when I was real young. And it's always stuck out with me. It's just about these bunch of guys that are real close going on an adventure hunt, treasure hunt, and they just become real, they become bonded, they go through adversity, and they ultimately, like, rely on each other and figure, like, find out who they truly are. So that, that one, and then also Dodgeball as well. Dodgeball is classic. So. Alright, last one. Um, I liked, in the beginning, I, didn't, I was hesitant about reading it, but it was required at CBSA. My senior year, we had to read the book Unbroken, and that was one of the most inspirational books I've ever read. The movie does not do it justice. I would say if you go see the movie, 
you have to read the book because the book's ten times better than the movie. Because this guy, this guy goes to hell, and it just shows you how much courage and how much will people have. I think sometimes we let our mental, me, mental uh, side just get to us, and we don't put in everything we have. But you see, when you you're put to life and death, that your lot, your muscles, your body is a lot stronger than you think. Good lesson. All right. Thanks so much for taking the time. Anything else for us? Nope. Go Bucks. All right. <laughs> yeah.